Before we start today's show, we want to invite you to stick around at the end of the episode to enjoy a preview of a new podcast that premieres on July 14th. As the industry's exclusive cannabis podcast network, MJ Bulls is proud to present Women Leading in Cannabis. Join host Kira Reed each week for inspirational discussions with women who are leading the cannabis industry. So now what you're really seeing is a very diverse set of consumer touch points, whether that's e-commerce, TV menus, drive through menus, self-service kiosks, and you're having to serve all of those. And I'm also seeing a, a trend among the larger retailers where they're stopping to build such large stores and they're building more smaller stores. So think less Walmart or Target Lowe's and think more like the Dollar General model or the... Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Cannabis Corona Report. Thanks for joining us. On today's show, we are going to talk about how the COVID-19 crisis has changed the cannabis retail sector. And to help better understand what's new with dispensaries, we are joined by Jeremy Jacobs from Enlighten. Jeremy, welcome back to the show. It's glad to be back, Dan. I know we were just catching up a moment ago. I think it's it's been a little over a year since we've had a chat, so glad to be back here. Yeah, well, we're happy to have you, Inc., because you're the perfect person just because of the nature of your business. It gives you a real insider's view. And for our, the people who listen to the Raising Cannabis Capital podcast, you will remember Jeremy was a guest on the podcast a couple of years. It was Jeremy, it's been almost a couple of years now. Yeah. Yeah. For everyone else, Enlighten provides the digital messaging that you see in dispensaries, and their message board, kiosk, TV, smart menus are in. You're like in over a thousand dispensaries. So let's get thirteen, fourteen hundred. Oh my gosh! Something at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's a huge jump from when we spoke before. Being across the country like that, you have a really good feel for what's going on in dispensaries. Now we're hearing that sales are just way up. Everyone we're talking to is way up. Let's start off here. Is that true? Are is sales at dispensaries way up? It's sort of, but in some ways. And I think to, to characterize the entire industry in one basket, I think, is the mistake a lot of people are making. We work with big MSOs all the way down to little one-off shops in the middle of nowhere in Oregon. And for much larger, higher traffic, higher DMA arenas and players and MSOs, absolutely, I've seen rises in sales. A lot of it's driven around that same hoarding mentality. You know, everybody ran out and bought a bunch of toilet paper and <laughs> Lysol and things like that. They also ran out and bought a bunch of cannabis as well. And so those stores, for sure, have seen an increase in revenue. And it's interesting to dive in a little deeper is it's the ticket sizes have basically doubled and the traffic has almost cut in half. And so it's bigger baskets from fewer people, obviously because less people want to go out and get exposed. But smaller retailers, Dan, they have not seen that increase in traffic. And I think a lot of them weren't really prepared for this, and some of them have gotten hurt. So, you know, as an industry average, and I don't have all the math to support it, but I would say there's winners and there's losers in this battle, and, and likely the revenues are pretty similar to what they were. It's just bigger baskets with smaller number of people walking in. Yeah, I mean, that kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense. And I think you're alluding to the fact that the ones that adjusted to the new environment were the ones that were successful. Yeah, absolutely. In the past, the in-store experience was really the backbone of dispensaries. And now, you know, they have to rely on some other methods. Maybe you can elaborate more on some of the changes that you've seen. Yeah. As I said earlier, we work with some of the biggest companies in the entire world. As you said, the bigger operations, they're the ones that adapted and changed. Everybody was really focused on an in-store retail experience, and it's not gone. We're still seeing traffic numbers. They dipped at one point down to about half of what they were. They're rising and climbing across the nation. But everybody had to embrace a new world. They had to embrace a world in which 
the way to serve your customer is not just a single way anymore. Now you have to have e-commerce in order to facilitate that curbside pickup and that delivery. Now we've got stores that are coming to us, retail operations, they're wanting our outdoor drive through menus because now the regulatory agencies are relaxing that because they see this is safer in this you know post-COVID-19 yeah. world. The age of the cannabis kiosk is upon us. You know, the number of self-service kiosks we were selling was quite a smaller number than what it is right now because people are preparing as customers are coming back and they don't want to interact with those bud tenders. And so now what you're really seeing is a very diverse set of consumer touch points, whether that's e-commerce, TV menus, drive through menus, self-service kiosks, and you're having to serve all of those. And I'm also seeing a, a trend among the larger retailers where they're stopping to build such large stores and they're building more smaller stores. So think less Walmart or Target Lowe's and think more like the Dollar General model where mm-hmm. there's a lot of smaller stores. So you're seeing those things on both ends. Man, that's an interesting perspective because you know, we've had some sh- some guests on our shows that were talking bigger, 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 bigger. But you're right. This change and now, you know, with curbside pickup and a lot of these changes, what do you think when the economy opens back up? Do you think these changes will stay in place or will they, a lot of them revert back to their original models? Well, the economy is opening back up. I mean, if you look at Florida, it's almost like it never closed. Uh, I live in Kentucky, and we don't have legalized cannabis, but there haven't been a lot of changes here. I mean, we all were instantaneously school teachers overnight because (laughs) school was closed. You know, outside of the fact we're all fighting for the same Internet in in our homes there for a while, not a lot's changed. And so I think the world is coming back alive. you got places like Seattle, Los Angeles, New York. You know, they're definitely still in a hunker-down status. But we are watching it come back alive, and we are seeing these are the exact impacts that people are putting in place. They're preparing for a world in which people are a lot more conscious of this. You know, the traffic flow back into dispensaries nationwide is definitely increasing. If it continues on this trend, it'll only be a, a few more months before it's 100% back to where it was at normal. And for us, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because – this whole thing happened right as we released our new product, Smart Hub. You've probably seen the press about. Yeah, I want to ask and, you about you know, that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the timing was incredible because it is a platform driven around the fact that to serve a customer correctly, you have to serve them in a multifaceted set of consumer endpoints. And so it's a platform that connects to all the POS systems, and it see, it serves clean consumer data to online, update your listing services, TV menus, drive through menus, self-service kiosks, and it powers all those endpoints. And so, you know, it's really worked out for us. I know it's been tough for some people, but for us, Smart Hub released right when it seems like all the retailers needed a Smart Hub and they needed those endpoints. So it's, it's been good for us and we've been seeing that the product's helpful for these people to go through this transition yeah you know i think you're you're right it's you know sometimes better to be lucky than good and having that right. yeah and having that at that time was was really worked out great for you because you know when you're trying to gather all this information from all these different touch points it, it can be laborsome i'm looking at it right now on your website i can see where that was a real benefit well, the, the big challenge is a lot of retailers didn't get into these various types of consumer endpoints because it was like wrestling a, a gorilla just to be able to keep their TV menus updated, which was everybody's focus before this, was you know primarily that retail environment. And it was a beast just to keep those things updated. So how are they even going to conceive taking on the self-service kiosk and e-commerce and all of these different components? Mm-hmm. And so we were already driving to answer that question. This just really expedited the whole thing. Thing, and it created a necessity among a lot of these customers, and we just happen to be there to feel that. So again, you're right. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> you know, let's talk about advertising. We have just a few more minutes yeah. left. You know, everyone knows that it's difficult to advertise to cannabis customers, and there's mm-hmm. very few platforms that target cannabis customers, and a big portion of your business is giving marketers access to cannabis customers through your in-store displays. You know, most of the time when there's an economic slowdown, advertising is one of the things that companies cut. Have you seen that? Well, we saw some people cut and we saw other people stand. And so it, you know, kind of goes back to your original question, 
how have sales been? And I said, some people are doing well and others aren't doing so well, but it averages out. You know, and you're seeing a similar attitude to that. It's Kobe McKenzie, co-founder with me of Enlighten. He put together a crisis marketing document, which analyzed when the crisis begins, what is it that has happened historically during different pandemics, depressions, and so forth, 9-11. What did big marketers do and did those bets pay off? And so we did the research, and what we discovered was that people that get aggressive during those moments, they're top of mind when you come out of that, and they reap massive benefits. So we helped spread that information to people, and we've seen a lot of new companies that weren't advertising, they weren't marketing, and they lit up some budgets. And then we obviously saw some of the big companies, as soon as something like this happens, the CFOs running around with red tape <laughs> saying we got to cut everything because revenues are down. So you saw both of those things. And one of the interesting things for our in-store network is since it's driven on impressions, the people that are actually advertising with us right now, since the traffic is down, they're getting a lot more share of voice. So for the same amount of money, they're getting basically twice as many ads played in front of those consumers and they're benefiting from that because that frequency of those consumers is driving sales. And yeah. So it's been good for us and it's been good for our customers. Well, that's something you, you uniquely enlightened is that you sell based on impressions. And I think that's for any potential advertiser out there, you want to get to cannabis customers. It, there's no better way. They, I mean, you, you know they're cannabis customers because they're in dispensaries. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and now we've got some new technology we're releasing it's a smart hub for the marketing side. And now we're offering to retarget those customers that have seen your ads in the store after they leave the store. So those ads can follow them on their mobile phones and in various applications that will accept Canvas advertising. And so that's also a new product for us. And it played well around this curbside thing because not a lot of people were coming in in some particular locations. So we've still been able to reach those consumers. And a lot of advertisers are taking advantage of that. Man. Well, we have all of Jeremy Jacobs and Enlighten's information in the show notes and also at mjbulls.com. So if you want to reach reach out to him directly to talk about adding Enlighten to your dispensary or talk to him about advertising and all this big brother stuff that he's got figured out, <laughs> <laughs> just reach out to him directly. Yeah. Jeremy, it is always fun to have you on the show. Thanks again for being here. Let's do this again. Absolutely. Dan, congratulations on years and years of success of this podcast, man. It's fantastic, and, and I always enjoy listening. Well, thank you. Thank you. My name is Kira Reed, and I'd like to invite you to be inspired by the women who are leading in the cannabis industry. Each week, we will discuss empowerment, leadership, and what it means to be a woman in charge in marijuana, hemp, and CBD. As the founder of the Women Empowered in Cannabis community, I have had the great pleasure to get to know many brilliant and talented women who are CEOs, executives, politicians, advocates, and community leaders that are focused on creating a cannabis economy that is just, fair, and equal. We'll learn how these women make decisions, how they navigate a predominantly male industry, and what they're doing to level the playing field for women. I hope you'll join us.